Okay, welcome to the Strange North channel. In this video, I'm going to show you that the province of British Columbia does indeed have seven cryptid legends. And honestly, there are even more than seven mysterious creatures that have been reportedly seen within the province. But I think that this list I've compiled really represents the strongest cryptid legends from within BC. And in case you don't know what a cryptid is, it's essentially a creature or a being whose existence has not yet been proven. They make up the mysterious creatures of legends and folklore. Folklore. Some people speculate that they are flesh and blood creatures and some think they may be sort of partially spiritual or energetic or perhaps interdimensional and something a bit more mystical. And if you're into cryptids you probably already know that within Canada the province of British Columbia is really the cryptid hotspot. There are probably one or two cryptids within the province that you can think of right off the bat just because they're very well known. But some of them are a bit more obscure. And honestly you could make a video that's hours and hours long dealing with this subject within the province. But I just wanted this video to provide a comprehensive overview of the cryptid situation within BC. And I'll point you towards other researchers who have contributed a ton of material on this subject. So let's get started with the list. At number one is one you probably are very aware of and that is Bigfoot or Sasquatch. It's a large hominid bipedal creature often almost completely covered in fur. And people that have seen it claim that it's more human than ape although it does have a lot of ape characteristics. And of course, it's very elusive and is usually said to be accompanied by a very foul smell. And there have been sightings across the continent and throughout Canada. As I covered in previous videos, the provinces of Alberta and Saskatchewan have had a surprising amount of Sasquatch sightings and interest. But on the North American continent, the Pacific Northwest is really the prime territory for Bigfoot. This is the region that has the most sightings and it has had the most general interest over over the years. And so in Canada, BC remains the hot spot for people searching for Bigfoot and this has been the province with the most sightings by far. The word Sasquatch actually comes from the Salish indigenous peoples of British Columbia. And this group as well as other indigenous groups from throughout the continent have had many legends of these things that resemble Sasquatch. Big, tall, hominid, bipedal, hairy creatures that remain very elusive and have limited contact with humans. And when European settlers started coming to BC, the stories of encountering Bigfoot started very quickly. In 1864, there was a man named Alexander Caulfield Anderson, who was a Hudson Bay Company fur trader and explorer, and he was exploring the Fraser Valley Canyon along with a group of other men. And they claimed that while they were in the canyon, they were attacked by a group of hairy humanoids who stood above the canyon and threw stones down at them. And Sasquatch encounters are usually not this aggressive, although there often is an element of aggression in some of the encounters. And there have just been a ton of other sightings and encounters with Bigfoot in British Columbia over the years as the province has developed over time. Bigfoot have really been encountered across the province, but most of the sightings have occurred in the southern portion of BC. And this makes sense because this is where the vast majority of the people live. And over the years, it really seems like the area around Harrison Hot Springs and just the whole Harrison River Valley in general has turned into the headquarters of Bigfoot culture. This area has had a lot of sightings, and they have a permanent Sasquatch museum that is attached to the Harrison Visitor Center in the town of Harrison Hot Springs. And if you're really into Bigfoot and you live anywhere in Western Canada, I definitely recommend visiting this place at least once. And there have been many Bigfoot researchers over the years, but in BC, one man stands tall among researchers of this cryptid, and that was John Green. He was actually the first researcher to investigate the site of the Patterson-Gimlin film, and he had a background in journalism. He actually had a master's degree in the subject and he started out as a skeptic of Bigfoot but as he researched this cryptid he eventually became a strong believer. Over time he compiled a database of sightings and prints which was the largest of its kind at the time and in the 1990s he transferred his database to his computer and he later made it available online. John Green was a very respected member of the community. He was actually the mayor of Harrison Hot Springs for a couple years and involved with the city council for many more. And so to this day, John Green is considered the most respected Bigfoot researcher within BC and a lot of his research is available online. There's another popular book on this subject called Sasquatch in British Columbia by Christopher L. Murphy and Thomas Steenberg. These are a couple other well-regarded researchers that have compiled a ton of data on Sasquatch within the province. And there are a bunch of websites that are dedicated entirely to Bigfoot research in North America. You have the Bigfoot Research Organization, which has compiled many sightings in BC. 
And you also have sites like SasquatchCanada.com, which has a ton of other anecdotal stories. And BigfootEncounters.com also has a ton of other stuff as well. And honestly, it seems like interest in the Bigfoot has only increased with time. It wasn't so clear that this would happen. I mean, I remember being into this stuff in the 90s. And during that time, it seemed like there was a definite stigma around the subject, and there still is. But it seems like general interest has exponentially grown within the past 20 years. And I think that's partly due to some of the major TV shows that have dealt with the subject. And the interest in this cryptid remains very high within the province of British Columbia. There are many Bigfoot Sasquatch events, festivals, and conventions throughout the year. And as you may have guessed, many businesses in this province lean into this Bigfoot folklore and include it in their company name and feature imagery of this creature. And so when you're talking about cryptid legends within the province of British Columbia, you obviously have to include the Bigfoot. Okay, at number two on the list is the Dogman. Essentially, this is a bipedal hominid creature with the face of a dog, usually covered in fur. I think of it as something similar to the werewolf in old European folklore. But prior to European settlement in Canada, there were First Nations groups that also had legends of creatures that resembled a dogman, a creature standing on two feet, having the face of a wolf or a dog covered in fur. I came across a really interesting story that Hammerson Peters had compiled on his website. And this referred to the dog people of Sputsum, British Columbia. I hope I'm saying that right. And in this article by Hammerson Peters, it talks about a Scots-Canadian anthropologist named James Tate who included the following story in his 1912 treatise on the Thompson Indians of South Central BC. This is a quote from his story describing the legends of this indigenous group. Quote, the dog people lived in an underground lodge near Sputsum. Their house was referred to as Dog House and had a false door. Strangers upon entering and when about to leave the bottom of the ladder to step on the floor, tumbled down into a pit of great depth where they were killed and eaten by the dog people who never came forward except at night. And I just found this excerpt of the story to be fascinating. I always wonder what contributed to these legends of really weird creatures. And it also just highlights that legends of canine humanoids predates the legends of werewolves that would have been brought over with the European settlers. And I also came across an interesting book on Amazon called The Dogman of British Columbia by Mostyn Hale-Manofsky. And this book is basically presented as fiction, but I just found it interesting that there was even a book at all on the dogman of British Columbia. And honestly, the province of BC isn't the strongest place for dogman sightings, but there have been some anecdotal stories throughout the years. But in general, the dogman is more strongly associated with the eastern portion of North America. But when you consider some of the fascinating legends from the indigenous groups in the area prior to Europeans, as well as a few interesting modern sightings, I think you have to include the Dogman when you're talking about cryptids within BC. Okay, at number three on the list is the Devil Monkey. It's essentially a large, creepy-looking monkey-type creature that often acts aggressively, and it's described as having very strong rear legs, sort of similar to a kangaroo. And there have been some modern sightings, but this is generally considered to be more a creature of the past. And again, I'm going to refer to Hammerson Peters, who has done some excellent work compiling data on legends of Canadian cryptids. There was a really interesting article by Hammerson Peters where he talks about different legends within indigenous groups in Canada's Northwest. And a few of them essentially talk about these monkey people that lived prior to modern times. Okay, I'm probably gonna butcher a couple of the names here, but the Atna First Nations groups in the Northwest had a legend of a creature referred to as the Satani, which is translated to a tailed ape or a monkey person. And the Tanana groups in the area had something called the Teketin, which translates to tailed man. They said it looked like an old Old man except with a long tail. And again, this is just a really fascinating piece of folklore and mythology from the groups that lived in Canada well before European settlement. And there haven't been a ton of modern sightings of the devil monkey, at least within BC. But John Green did include a really interesting sighting of this creature in his book Year of the Sasquatch, which was published in 1970. And in this book, he includes a story told by Gordon Ferrier, who saw a monkey-like creature many times near his home near Squamish. He said this happened in 1969. And in addition to seeing this creature many times, which he described as being a large monkey with a big tail, he said that dogs in the area acted very upset on many occasions around this time as well. And overall, the devil monkey is more strongly associated with other areas of the continent, but there's definitely enough folklore surrounding this particular creature within British Columbia where I think you have to include it on a list of cryptids within the province. 
Okay, at number four is perhaps the most famous cryptid within BC, and that is the Ogopogo of Okanagan Lake. There was a 2019 survey in the province that placed the Ogopogo as BC's most awesome cryptid. And really, other than Bigfoot, this is really the most well-known creature within the province. And Okanagan Lake is a really big lake. It stretches on for 127 kilometers, and it has a maximum depth of 762 feet, and an average depth of 249 feet. So this is a really big lake. And this Ogopogo, this creature that has been seen in the lake, is said to be your typical lake monster. It's a serpentine creature with smooth, dark skin, a large, thick body, around 50 feet long. It's said to have many humps and sort of moves through the water like a sea serpent. And this particular legend goes back to the First Nations groups that were in the area before Europeans. For hundreds of years, the local groups would sacrifice small animals before entering the water. There is this legend legend of a First Nations chief who was visiting Okanagan Lake and he completely denied the existence of this Ogopogo and according to the legend he was out on the lake on a canoe with his family and the monster sucked him and his family down along with their boat into the lake and they were never seen again. There is a really interesting story from 1855 in which settler John McDougall claimed that his horses were sucked down into the lake by this monster and he also nearly lost his canoe the same way as well. And in 1870 there was the first official sighting of the monster by European settlers and that was Susan Allison who gave a very detailed account of seeing the Ogopogo. And over the years there have just been a ton of sightings and even photographs taken of this creature. Although nothing conclusive has ever been found and a lot of the pictures just show images that are fuzzy, ill-defined, or just a bit nebulous in terms of what they could be. But honestly there have been a ton of eyewitness accounts from many credible witnesses over the years and many researchers have attempted to prove the existence of this creature. And although its existence has not been officially proven, this is one of the strongest cryptid legends really from throughout North America. And the Ogopogo is often referred to as Canada's Loch Ness Monster. And of course, skeptics over the years have claimed that people are really just seeing big fish or eels or even a group of otters swimming in a row. But many witnesses have claimed that they definitely saw something that was not one of those creatures. And to this day, the area around Okanagan Lake really embraces and leans into the folklore of the Ogopogo. And this is definitely one of the prime cryptids within the province. And you might be surprised to learn that the province of BC actually has multiple legends of lake monsters. And at number five is the Thetis Lake Monster. This has been referred to as the Canadian Lizard Man, and it even has an entry on the popular cryptid wiki. Essentially, this has been officially debunked, but there's still some mystery surrounding it. So in 1972, there were two boys that were playing around the lake, and they claimed that they saw an aquatic reptilian humanoid looking thing. It was this creature that was five feet tall, sort of had a human-like face, but it was covered in barbed spikes. And one of these boys even claimed that this creature approached him and slashed him on his hand. They reported this event to the local RCMP, and pretty soon the police were investigating around the lake. And four days later, two people on the other side of the lake claimed that they saw this very same creature. It came out of the water, looked around, and then went back in the water, and it totally freaked them out. However, down the road, the two boys that initially saw this creature claimed that they made the story up as a hoax to get attention. However, the other witnesses did not claim the same thing. And so there's definitely a bit of mystery surrounding these sightings. And this is definitely a lake monster that's a lot different from the typical lake monsters of Canada. Typically, the lake monsters of Canada are more like sea serpents. They have long bodies, often a horse-like head. But this was a lot different. This was apparently a humanoid reptilian that could leave the water. And this is just one of my favorite local cryptids within Canada. And interestingly, the Haida First Nations groups in the Queen Charlotte Islands area have a mythology of a similar creature. They describe this creature as being sort of a humanoid reptile with a human face, it has two tails, and it is wearing a hat. And the Haida groups in the area often paint or carve this creature onto their canoes. And this is just one of the more standout lake monster legends within Canada. And so the Thetis Lake monster definitely deserves a mention on this list.
And at number 6 is the Cameron Lake Monster. This is also on Vancouver Island. And although this isn't as well known as the Thetis Lake Monster, a bunch of people have claimed to have seen a monster in this lake, and so this definitely deserves a mention on this list. And this is described as being very close to the other legendary lake monsters in Canada. It's sort of a long sea serpent, it often has humps on its back as it moves through the water, and the head is described as something being very horse-like. And this is not as ancient a creature as some of the other cryptids within BC. The sightings really only go back to the 1980s. But in the 2000s, there was definitely renewed interest in this creature. In 2007, a lady named Bridget Horvath took pictures of what she said were three large, long objects chasing each other in the water. And the picture she took is a bit fuzzy. It looks like there's two creatures in there, but she said there were three total. And then a couple years later, a prominent cryptozoology group in British Columbia conducted a series of tests on this lake. And using your sort of typical sonar fish finders, they claimed to have detected very large cylindrical shaped objects near the bottom of the lake. And their research was really inconclusive, and skeptics have claimed that people are really seeing a large sturgeon or maybe a large trout. But witnesses claim that it's something entirely different, and it's more of a sea serpent and not one of these other creatures. And so the legend of this BC lake monster definitely isn't as famous or well known as the Ogopogo, but it's definitely worth mentioning when you're talking about cryptids within the province. And it's just another one of the lake monster legends from Vancouver Island. And at number 7 to close out this list is Caddy the Cadborosaurus. So the Cadborosaurus, which was nicknamed Caddy by journalist Archie Wills, is a legendary sea serpent in the folklore of Pacific Coast groups and its name is derived from Cadboro Bay in the Greater Victoria area on Vancouver Island. And so British Columbia not only has a bunch of lake monster legends, but it also has an ocean monster legend as well. And this creature is part of the folklore of different indigenous groups in the coastal areas of Canada's northwest. And there were early European reports of this creature starting in the late 1800s around Vancouver and even in the Seattle area. And it's described as being very similar to a lot of the lake monster legends. It has a long serpent-like body, humps on its back, it's said to have flippers as well as a horse-like head and generally dark smooth skin. There was a famous story in the 1930s where a boat captain claimed to have seen this creature. He said it was about 40 feet long and he said that 10 feet of it were standing up above the water. And this creature was apparently seen many times during the 1930s along the Pacific Northwest coast. And of course skeptics have raised the legitimate idea that these sightings could be attributed to more regular sea creatures. But people have repeatedly claimed to have seen something that does not fit the description of of any known creatures in the ocean. Something that is described as being sort of close to a prehistoric sea serpent. And to this very day, the legendary Caddy remains one of British Columbia's most well-known cryptids. Okay, so I hope you found that interesting and informative. I really intended on this to be a general overview of the major cryptids within the province of BC. And if you're interested in other legendary creatures throughout Canada, I already did a couple videos on cryptid legends in Alberta and Saskatchewan, so you might find those interesting as well. If you watched this far, thank you very much. And if you'd like to watch more of my videos in general, please consider subscribing to my channel. I upload about one video per week. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on The Strange North Channel.